It's something we built from the ground up. We want to be able to test different uh, concepts and different scenarios. We did a lot of research over the last year, understanding what the users will want and need. You know, moving forward as autonomous cars start to come into the mainstream are, is very important to us. And being able to test some of those concepts, you know, as we move forward with a simulator, we think is really important. Also, understanding users' level of comfort with having autonomous modes in the vehicle as well. We want to be out in front as this technology emerges. With the simulator, you know, we can be right there and, you know, meet these challenges head on and uh, discover things as autonomous vehicles hit the mainstream. One of the other things that we're really happy with is that we can move and change the hardware as well. We have a gauge cluster, we have an infotainment platform in there, but we can move those things around, we can create new environments for the user to test. Uh, we have a camera in there so we can conceivably test eye tracking, head tracking, we can test gesture tracking. There's a lot of different things we can do to understand how the user will react or you know, what they'll like, what they'll dislike, or reaction times, and being able to test different things in the car. The first scenario is a manual drive. The user will sit down and start to drive along a country road. Further down the road, they will be surprised by a deer. They'll hit the deer, and then we can demonstrate what the user would be able to do if the car could take over. You know, they would actually avoid the deer uh, upon a replay. The second scenario is highway driving, where the user will start from a stop on top of the on-ramp, merge onto the freeway, get comfortable, and then merge into a, an autopilot lane. When they trigger the autopilot, there will be a 10 second count. At that point, the uh, car will take over. So the user is steering with the road, and then as soon as the car takes over, they're able to experience an autonomous driving scenario where they're not driving, the gauge cluster, the head unit can perform different tasks. The gauge cluster becomes an extra screen. They can watch a movie, they can play a game, they can do email, all those type of things. The third scenario is fully autonomous. The user is taken around a city, going to a place where they select it on a map. The unique thing about this that we're really excited about is it ties in with our connected service strategy, where a user is greeted from a friend and their path is diverted, so the friend wants to meet for dinner. They select a place based on some of the things they both like at the same distance between them. So the connected service does that calculation in the cloud and has given those options to you. So you make the selection and you drive there. Because the user isn't driving, the windshield can take on the form of another screen. So there's a document that can be opened, you can read texts, you can see uh, live augmented reality type symbols, you know, highlighting of vehicles, showing your text document. There can even be like a live radar, live speed. So when you give up control of your cluster, there's still actually crucial data that can be viewed. The actual simulation is gone over very well. People feel really comfortable driving. We've been able to successfully model a specific cars to their physical behaviors on the road. And having uh, that you know, option, it feels real for people who are driving. Uh, it takes very little time to get used to, so people will have generally just sat down and started driving and felt really good right away. We're really excited about the possibilities.